Setelah sampai dia di negara Malaysia, dia mengaku sangat menyesal karena kenapa ia baru mengatakan itu setelah enam minggu lamanya dia berada di negara Malaysia sebenarnya apa yang terjadi Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome back to my youtube channel hari ini balik lagi bersama saya Indra SFN apa kabar teman-teman semua di sana dan tidak pernah jenuh-jenuhnya tidak pernah bosan saya menyapa anda semua di sana semoga kita dalam keadaan baik-baik saja sehat senantiasa bukan hanya kita bahkan seluruh keluarga kita semua orang yang kita sayangi dan juga segala bentuk aktivitas kita diberikan kemudahan dan kelancaran termasuk puasa kita di bulan suci ramadhan ini guys ya semoga diberikan keberkahan oleh Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amin amin ya robbal alamin oke okay, di sini ada satu cerita yang sangat unik keren dan juga menarik guys ini terkait tentang wanita asal Inggris nah rupanya wanita asal Inggris ini pernah saya reaksi di video saya sebelumnya guys karena sebelum itu dia banyak mengupload video-video terkait ya hal-hal yang menarik ya guys ya nah kali ini ada video yang sangat mengejutkan yang baru saja dia upload yang gak kalah seru ya guys ya. Hal itulah yang akan kita reaksi, kita angkat pada video kali ini. Baik, ini wanita sudah 6 minggu di negara Malaysia. Namun setelah 6 minggu lamanya dia di Malaysia, dia baru saja mengaku ada penyesalan dan juga kepanikan. Nah guys, apa yang dia maksud setelah 6 minggu di negara Malaysia baru dia katakan ini? Ada penyesalan dan juga kepanikan. Nah, kepanikan ini seperti apa, guys? Dan penyesalannya tentang hal apa? Di sini akan kita cari tahu kenapa ia baru mengatakan itu setelah enam minggu lamanya dia berada di negara Malaysia. Sebenarnya, apa yang terjadi kepada wanita Inggris ini di negara Malaysia? Kenapa dia mengatakan dia sangat menyesal dan juga penuh rasa kepanikan? Oke, okay, sebelum kita mereaksinya alangkah baiknya bagi Anda yang belum support channel ini, silahkan kalian dukung dulu dengan mengklik tombol subscribe dan aktifkan notifikasi bell agar tidak ketinggalan update video terbaru dari channel ini. Dan langsung saja guys, tanpa banyak bahasa basi karena diri saya ini penuh rasa penasaran untuk menyaksikan video itu, tanpa berlama-lama kita mereaksinya, jom! So I've been here for what? over six weeks now and I've noticed that there are a few similarities with Malaysia and the UK so I thought today why not when I'm in the pool chance it with my microphone in the water and tell you what those similarities are now obviously this is not a similarity that you're going to get when you're in the UK that is not a similarity when you're going to get in the UK so let's talk about the fundamentals right so number one the roads. I told you before, the roads, you drive out of your drive, you get on that motorway, it is like you're in the UK. However, when you go KL city centre, when you go to Malacca city centre, I'm mean, actually Malacca's different, Malacca's quite calm, um, but some of the roads are really busy and you have to watch out for the motorcyclists. So that, apart from that, a little bit busier, a little bit kind of crazy driving, nothing like Turkey, nothing like Pakistan, nothing like Egypt, it's like England the roads, the cars, the motorways. Um, and I'd say the Malaysians, Chinese, pretty good at their driving. You don't get any of that craziness. The craziness comes from people that have come from the UK. Driving, right, number two. Big one for us lot, us Brits, is that you're driving on the right-hand side of the road. I've driven in Dubai. Me and my daughter got lost up a seriously long carriageway in Dubai. We were freaking because we had no fuel left. She'll remember this if you ask her when you do get the chance. But it was left-hand drive and it was all because I missed the turning. And so here it's right-hand drive. Okay, so you, you don't have to think about where you are on the motorway. You don't have to think where you are on the road. And you don't have to worry about where that turning is going to come off. Because like in the UK, all of the exits are on the left. You know, and the good thing is, very well signposted, loads of services, the same way we have it on our motorways, so I love the driving here. It's not difficult. Anyone can do it. Single females, don't even worry. If you can drive in the UK, in your city centers, when there's a traffic jam, you will be fine. And coming on to the topic of traffic jams, point number three, 
is there are traffic jams here and there's always quite a few. If you're going to live in KL, if you're going to live in Putrajaya, if you're going to live in Selangor, if you're going to live in Shah Alam, all of those areas that surround KL expect traffic jams. I mean, for us coming out of Malacca... Wait guys, kita pause dulu. Saya baru paham dengan video yang ditampilkan ini guys Ya rupanya dia menyamakan bahwa Malaysia itu sama dengan keadaan yang ada di Inggris Tentang lalu lintasnya Jadi dia katakan sangat berbeda dengan yang ada di Dubai, Mesir, Turki ya Sangat berbeda sekali situasinya Namun ketika dia masuk ke Malaysia itu tidak berbeda jauh dengan apa yang dia rasakan di negaranya yaitu adalah Inggris karena jalur, jalur lalu lintasnya itu tata tertibnya ya dan juga e, jalan yang lancar di sana jalan yang besar sem, itu semua mengingatkan dia dengan situasi yang ada di Inggris nah guys bahkan Dubai Mesir Turki pun tak bisa menyamai ya Inggris ini hanya bisa disamai oleh Malaysia, ini yang dikatakan oleh wanita ini guys, ya, ini pengakuannya. Oke kita lanjutkan lagi, karena tentu saya ingin mengetahui apa saja yang ia katakan terkait tentang Malaysia. Oke, okay. like. You will see that there, there are traffic jams, but they're just not as bad as the other cities. Um, Malacca itself is positioned in a really good location. We are an hour and a half, because I went to KL the other day, right? So it took me an hour and a half in the morning after the 6am Fajr and then um, we also have um, is it Johor JB they call it we also have um, within I think an hour an hour and a half JB um, as an area which is another city not far from us here anyway so we've done point one point two point three is the driving um, so what else? Okay, so we talked about the cars, we talked about the roads. Let's talk about the houses, right? The houses, all right, when you look over there, you could have one of those in the UK. In fact, there's a lot of modern houses in the UK being built like that, you know? But they're in like areas where, like outskirts of London, where you've got an architect and the architects do new draw. I've seen houses like this in the UK, actually, I'm not gonna lie. However, houses in Malaysia, usual pitched roofs, you can see you you know one of the one of the things that sold it to me here was I looked out the window and I'm looking at pitched red roofs and I'm thinking this is the, the houses are like the UK. Except for they're just bigger, you know. You have big houses, you have bigger gardens, um, and you have just normal streets like we do, um, and driveways at the front. So I think there are some places that I look at and the architecture is still there, the same as it was. So that's point four. What else similarities? Okay, supermarkets. So I have now done Lotus, I've done Aeon, I've done the family store, and I've done the local little 7-Elevens and, you know, like the co-ops, that kind of thing. I've done all of those. Um, the stores, that you bigger stores you go to, you will not feel like, like, Lotus was owned by Tesco's. It's now owned by Lotus, but the influence inside is very much like a Tesco. So you go in there and it will be very much like Tesco's. I think the top of the range is Aeon. You know, the, the, the service is fantastic. The range of products is phenomenal. Far, far greater than your Waitrose. Far greater than your Asda's and your Sainsbury's. It knocks socks off of all of our supermarkets in the UK. Your Aeon here is amazing. Amazing shopping experience. The malls you have, we don't have those in the UK. Okay, so back, back to similarities though. I have to say that the shopping supermarket experience is not only similar but it's better what else have we got let's go on to education shall we because <clears throat> so many of you are asking about Hira and what I'm doing about her education and I haven't quite decided yet whether we're going to stick to um homeschooling what guys ini semakin menarik ya oke okay, kita pause di sini dan ini semakin menarik saja ya Nah, tadi juga dia katakan bahwa rumah atau bangunan-bangunan yang ada di sana itu juga mirip dengan apa yang dia lihat di negaranya itu Inggris guys ya. Sangat mengejutkan. Dan juga hal lainnya dia katakan bahwa terkait tentang supermarket, pusat perbelanjaan. Bahkan dia membandingkan dengan negara Inggris yang mana Malaysia jauh lebih unggul ya daripada apa yang pernah dia rasakan di negaranya yaitu Inggris. Bahkan Malaysia lebih unggul, lebih besar dan juga lebih lengkap guys. 
Wah ini apa dia mengatakan hal sejujurnya ya guys ya. Tapi kayaknya apa yang dia rasakan itu ya tentu apa yang memang dilihatnya ya guys ya. Apa yang dia lihat itu yang dia katakan. Ini memang nyata guys. Ini dikatakan langsung oleh orang Inggris. Oke kita lanjut. Like. Voice of the Malaysian schools, the Chinese schools, the international schools, the international Islamic schools, um, which I can't do because they're out of area and, um, you know, we'll see really where destiny kind of takes me. But at the moment, my um, settling seems to be in Malacca. Um, so at the moment, I'm thinking I'm going to carry on homeschooling her. However, it is like the education standard is what is important to people. And you have to remember that the Malaysians gained independence from the Brits in 1957, I think it was. Um, Malaysia is still part of the Commonwealth, so they still talk to one another about how to help and how to improve. Um, so there was that. And then also the British actually only left and took their military bases from Malaysia in 1971. That is not that long ago. So you can imagine the years of um, influence the Brits had on this country. It's difficult to undo, but why would you want to? Because actually it's very, very similar to the systems that we have in the UK. Their policies are the similar to the ones that we have in the UK, like the government. Right. Um, in the UK, you have your parliamentary elections and a government is formed and you'll have a prime minister. They have exactly the same process here. And they also have laws that are common law that we use in England. So the laws applied in Malaysia are common law and also they do apply some Sharia law. But because of the Brits being here and that influence of the West, the British particularly, they have adopted so many of the principles of law that we have in the UK, which is amazing. So for example, when I rented my property and I read the tenancy agreement, the tenancy agreement is very much like my assured short hold tenancy agreement that I had in the UK. Obviously, I know that agreement inside out because it was my business. Um, and even from sales agreements, when we were selling houses, the sales agreements were similar. I've had conversations with bankers and the structures in the banks. You know, the, um, the Malaysian bank, the central Malaysian bank itself, um, is similar to the way that we operate in the UK. Banking, the bank cards, the pins. Um, even when you go in branch, it just has this absolutely similar feeling to the UK except for everyone that's working there is either Chinese, Malaysian, Chinese or Malaysian. And it makes this experience a darn sight better than what I've ever experienced in the UK. No offense to the people in the banks, but I've been there and you know what, you guys are unhappy. And I understand that you're unhappy because you don't get this every day. Now I'm in the middle of their summer and it is hot. So temperature is one of the things that We do get in the UK, and we're not denying that we don't get a summer, but the summer in the UK is like, the heat is so unbearable. Like I'm out right now, it is uh, about 1.30, midday. I've just done a great swim that normally, like my fitness level's improving, let's just say. Um, so I've had a fantastic swim, um, but this is bearable. I'm wearing black. You know, I'm out, or I'm in a pool and I'm dipping, but still, it's still bearable. You know, all of it is bearable. And this is just like, it's just beautiful. So I think that would hit all of the similarities that I, find, I have found whilst being here now in Malaysia. And the chances are I might find some more. But as I start to dig and delve, I no doubt will find other things. Like I'm yet to explore the taxation. And I'm going to do a whole video on taxation, guys, because whether you plan to um, live here temporarily or live here permanently, things like tax, your income, your employment. Employment law, I believe, is very similar to the UK as well. There's a lot of fairness. And that is it's not, you know, when a country was run for such a long time by the British, you cannot be surprised that the framework that they've set up is still going to be there. All of that 
presence is still here. And it's, um, and it's just so easy as a British person to slot straight in. But the difference is, is that because we come from an Asian culture, we still enjoy all of that cultural experience that we had, the, the, the growth, you know how we grew up with culture, it would be lifeless if we were to go somewhere and not maintain our culture. And that is so possible here. So as a British Pakistani person living in Malaysia, not only will you get the best of the UK, but you will get the best of Asia as well in one place. And that is why I will do my absolute best to spend as much time as I can here. Dan demikian tadi guys, video yang baru saja kita reaksi ya. Sungguh kata di akhirnya itu ya memang betul-betul sangat mengajutkan saya guys. Dia mengatakan bahwa setelah dia di Malaysia, dia mendapatkan hal yang lebih baik bahkan saat dia berada di negaranya Inggris. Dan juga ini sangat lebih baik daripada negara-negara Asia lainnya. Jadi intinya di sini kesimpulan dia mengatakan bahwa di Asia Malaysia adalah tempat yang paling bagus ya guys ya, paling dia suka karena banyak fasilitas yang memang dia inginkan, diharapkan itu terjadi ya, terkabul di negara Malaysia. Nah guys, tadi di awal dia mengatakan bahwa ada sedikit ya kita bahas terkait tentang uh, kepanikan dan juga penyesalan guys. Nah wanita ini, apa penyesalannya saat dia masuk ke negara Malaysia? Setelah sampai dia di negara Malaysia, dia mengaku sangat menyesal karena ya kenapa tidak dari dulu dia lakukan hal itu? Kenapa tidak dia pergi langsung dari Inggris ke negara Malaysia? Kenapa dia harus mengembara jauh-jauh ke negara Mesir, Uni Emirat Arab, ya, Turki? Kenapa dia harus ke sana terlebih dahulu? Padahal apabila dia langsung ke negara Malaysia tentu dia langsung sudah mendapatkan apa yang selama ini dia harapkan. Nah, memang ya dari video saya sebelumnya, saya mereaksi, mereaksi wanita ini bahwa dia sangat menginginkan negara Islam ya untuk tempat dia tinggali di sana guys, ya, selain di negara Inggris. Memang dia ingin keluar dari Inggris dan ingin mencari negara Islam lainnya. Malaysia lah menjadi tempat dia bernaung sekarang, berdomisili dan dia sangat betah di sana. Oke, tadi kita bahas tentang penyesalan. Nah, ini kita bahas lagi tentang kepanikan. Kenapa dia panik selama di Malaysia? Rupanya, cerita ini datang bukan dari Malaysia, guys. Namun, saat dia berada di salah satu negara yang ada di Eropa, guys. Yaitu adalah Turki. Turki atau Mesir tadi, guys. ya Intinya seperti itu. Jadi, dia ceritanya itu bersama anaknya membawa kereta. Jadi, uh, saat dia pergi membawa kereta itu, lalu dia pergi ke arah tujuan lah lupa ya guys ya lupa arah tikungan ke mana jadi dia pun mutar-mutar ke tempat itu uh, tidak mendapatkan alamat yang pasti sehingga uh, bahan bakar atau minyak mau keretanya pun sudah habis ya guys ya nah kalau di Malaysia itu sangat berbeda bahkan dikatakan itu sangat jelas ya petunjuk-petunjuk arah kemana pun kalau kita nak ingin pergi kemana arah itu semua sudah ada ya guys ya jadi itulah hal yang membuat atau yang me menyenangkan hati dia guys jadi kalau sewaktu dia di Malaysia mau kemana pun dia semua akan bisa berjalan lancar karena semua sudah terkoordinasi ya arah jalan sudah ada dan juga petunjuk sudah tampak jelas ya, bahkan kalau kita juga belum jelas ada map yang akan uh, menuntun arah kita guys nah itulah yang membuat dia suka di Malaysia nah fasilitas-fasilitas itulah yang tentu ya disukai oleh banyak orang guys nah, ini satu orang yang mewakili dari banyak orang yang membuat orang itu betah mengapa Malaysia itu menjadi pusat perhatian turis asing di Asia ini guys. Ya, salah satunya karena adanya fasilitas yang telah diberikan untuk memudahkan semua turis yang ada di sana. Nah, guys, itulah mengapa dia mengatakan Malaysia itu jauh lebih baik daripada negara-negara yang pernah dia masuki, termasuk bahkan negara asalnya sendiri guys. Dia katakan Uh, ada juga yang mirip, bahkan ada juga yang lebih baik daripada negaranya, yaitu Inggris ya guys ya. Nah Malaysia ya perlahan ya, step by step ini peningkatannya, progresnya sangat jelas ya guys ya. Uh, so apapun yang terjadi di sana, termasuk kebersihan dan juga mengundang turis asing untuk datang di sana, tentu sudah difasilitasi oleh 
pihak terkait. Jadi di sana uh, begitu turis masuk, melihat langsung situasinya dan merasa betah, Ya kalau dia balik lagi ke negaranya pasti akan berpikir ya atau mengingat kembali kenangan saat dia berada di, di negara Malaysia itu yang terjadi. Oke lagi sedikit dari video aku semoga video ini bermanfaat bagi kita semua dan aku mohon diri mohon maaf jika ada kesalahan kata kesalahan sikap saya kepada anda semua mohon dimaafkan dan aku akhiri wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.